Well, good evening, everyone. Michael Soothing here. I believe what I'm going to do this evening is look at the new cars for 2019. Car and driver and motor trend. The motor trend is actually 2018, but don't tell anyone. I like their format better, so I used their issue for cars that haven't changed, because they show everything, and Car and Driver doesn't show much, as you will see. See, like in Motor Trend, you get a list of all the relevant cars and the stats here for each thing. And I like that, a photo of each one. But in Car and Driver, you get only a few, even though this is the new car issue, what they'll do is they'll just spotlight one car every now and then and not tell you much about the other ones. Let me see if I can show you. Is this the right one? Yeah. This is the new for 2019. But they'll show you, you know, just one car. They don't give you a good comparison with other models. Like here's the one for Ford and Honda and GMC. It's just showing you a couple of things, but it is interesting and we'll read from this too. But before we do, in fact, we'll start with the car and driver. I think, I don't want this to be super long. It could be really long if I get carried away. I need a little bit of my usual huba booba gum so that I can stay somewhat moistened during the reading process and because some of you like gum chewing sounds but I'll try not to be too obnoxious with the sounds okay since we're on the Ford page Let's see what it says. It says car death watch. That doesn't sound too good, does it? Much ink has been spilled about Ford's decision to discontinue nearly all of its passenger cars. See, they're only going to have trucks and maybe SUVs. I think they will retain... Well, let's see if it tells us. The focus will stop. The Taurus will end by March 2019. Coming right up. The Fiesta will end. The Fusion will be around for a few more years. What about the Mustang? It must tell here somewhere. Oh. Of several new versions. I might have to whisper some of this. Several versions keep us occupied while we wait for the full bore Shelby GT500 to arrive. For one, the bullet Mustang is back and it's just about the same as it ever was. Available in dark Highland green or black if you want to be less predictable. 
it costs about 3000 more than the GT Premium. I just watched the movie Bullet on the Retro HD channel. The best car chase ever filmed up to that time. And maybe for all time in the top ten, although not without its flaws. You'll notice that when they're racing through the streets and hills of San Francisco, you'll see the two cars going by the same um, prop cars over and over, like a dark green Volkswagen. So watch for that if you're watching the movie Bullet. What else here? Let's see what other car models they discuss. What's this here? A Genesis. New model. On the third day, Genesis created a 3 Series competitor and saw that it was very good. Okay, they're doing a takeoff on the seven days of creation in Genesis. It's a pretty good looking car. Looks a lot like my Mazda 6. There it is from the back. But all cars, as I mentioned before, seem to look alike these days. All the SUVs, all the sedans. Look, even the, um, what was once a very ugly looking Honda Insight now looks pretty attractive. There it is, the Honda Insight. Zero to 60 in 7.7 7 seconds. It's an electric hybrid. And I believe it's a pretty good version of electric hybrid. According to this review, top speed 114. It's not a performance sedan like so many, but um, if you're looking for a good handling commuter car, I had a Honda Hybrid and it went a couple hundred thousand miles without the slightest problem. Other than a battery pack replacement, which was done for free under warranty. And that's good because those batteries were like 2,000 bucks in the hybrid. Oil. Anyway. Everybody's going to vehicles like this now. SUVs, but they now call many of them crossovers because they're kind of an SUV and kind of a sports sedan. They're trying to be both. I like, in that category, I like the Mazda 5 which came out on top in a recent comparison I saw of crossovers. But here's an interesting looking car. This is the Hyundai Veloster. Veloster. Is that like the Velociraptor in Jurassic Park? I don't know. But the title of this is the value problem. The reason they title it the value problem is that Hyundai is giving you a lot of car for the money. A turbo R-spec car for only 23900 bucks. That's the best bargain 
bargain you can find for this type of vehicle. It does 0 to 60 in 6.2 seconds. And that's not bad at all for a car in this class. And um, pretty decent brakes. Really excellent skid pad number for road holding around tight corners. But you know what? It's got an ugly cut off rear end. I don't like that style. It's hard to see in that photo, but it's a cut off rear end. Don't you hate it when you have a cut off rear end? I do. I don't want anybody messing with the rear end at all. Okay. Anyway, performance per dollar, good distinctive design, more sophisticated. Lust ends at the value cal calculus. Nothing special steering and weird doors. Hmm. Weird doors. Like the Tesla, the doors open up like that direction, right? What if you're next, right next to another car? Does that still work? I don't know. Anyway, this says here that the Jaguar I-Pace, which is this electric vehicle, is the biggest threat to Tesla yet. Let's see if they tell us why. Serenity, now roomy interior. Better than adequate range and performance. Sloth-like infotainment responses. Hmm. Fragmented charging network are the downsides. Okay. I read through this already, this one. And it basically says you're getting more car for your money with this Jaguar I-Pace. What do they charge? 70k, so it's like, you know, um, it's like the Tesla 3. What else do we have here? Lean and mean. Here's a little Mazda crossover. The Mazda CX-3. That's not the one I would get if I was in the market. I would get the CX or the 5. It's a bit bigger with more towing capacity. I would like to get a small boat to go fishing. You know, to go fishing. And um, I need something to tow it with, right? But I don't know if I want to get another big car. Maybe I'll just get a little old pickup so I can haul stuff around like loads of bark for the yard and stuff like that. But you know, once you haul a load of bark, then do you still need a pickup? You know, or have you done your male testosterone? fuel duty already. I don't know. All right. I don't know if I want to go all through car and driver. They're more thorough in some of their discussion, but they don't tell you much about a lot of the models. So when they do discuss a model, they're pretty good. But they only have a handful in here. Let's see. Are we there yet? Ta 
talking about the Tesla Model 3. Didn't I tell you to dump Tesla stock a few weeks ago when it was 360 a share? And Elon Musk was lying to everyone, saying he was going to take the company private for over 400 a share? Well, now Tesla's down to $260 a share and will probably drop further because they're not able to make a profit on their very excellent product. It is an excellent car, but you need to be able to make a profit as a company, not just make, you know, I could open a restaurant and make the best gourmet steaks around. But if I charge $80 a plate and no one, you know, uh, or if I charge, let's say, let's say a beautiful steak dinner cost me 25 bucks to make and I'm only charging 20, I will lose money on each steak dinner. So that wouldn't be a very good business model, would it? How did this magazine get all scrunched up? Look at that. Somebody scrunched me and makes this poor boss Mustang looks like it got in a little accident or something. It's disturbing. Don't you think? I think Joanne used to live by here. Copenhagen. Yeah. In the suburbs. But I don't think she likes tobacco products. Even if it's chewing tobacco. So we won't give her any of this Copenhagen. Now, let's see. What does the motor trend have in it? Karma Rivero, Back to the Future. That's an interesting looking car. Don't you think that's pretty cool looking in the front? A little strange. I don't know. Chevy Equinox. I'm not so sure. Kia Stinger GT. That looks like an outdated design to me. What do you think? Oh, look. Retro. Rear view motor trend. That's more like it. Let's look back in time and see. 50 years ago, we had, um, what was on Motor Trend 50 years ago? The new models for 1968. Um, we compared them to old model. We test drove the new BMW 1600 and the Volvo 144S. See, they show up the front of a Pontiac GTO there too. Down in the lower left. 30 years ago. They were looking at exotic Corvettes. Most car mags have an issue devoted to Corvettes at least once a year. I think Corvette has their own magazine even. Let's see, we also had a 7.5 liter V8 that goes corners and stops with surprising sharpness. And then 10 years ago, 10 years ago, right here, they were talking about the second generation Cadillac. CTS, I should say, Cadillac CTS, 
Um, yeah. The Fifty years ago, the magazine cost 50 cents. Now it costs, if you buy it in the store, what does it cost now? It doesn't even have a price. You have to take a small home mortgage out to buy it or a personal loan. I think it's like five bucks or something. Four fifty. Oh look. The Honda Civic Type R. If I was a young kid still, the Honda Civic Type R is what I would want to buy. When I was much younger, I bought a Civic CRX. That was the hot little two-seater at the time it came out. And I loved that car. You couldn't roll that car. It was like driving one of those little, um, you know, do you ever go to those little tracks that have go-karts, you know? They sit so low, the center of gravity, that you couldn't roll them if you tried. They'll stay planted. That's the way the CRX was. Very lightweight and low CG. Let's see what they say. Readers' thoughts on past issues. Do I want to read other readers' thoughts? Nah. Okay. Never mind them. That looks a little neon. That Huba. Booba. It almost looks neon. Let's start looking at the cars instead. Look, that starts with the Acuras. If I was going to buy a sedan, one that I would consider in my top 10 would be an Acura ILX. Very nice. I had a couple Acuras in the past along with many other Honda products. And they always ran flawlessly without any problems whatsoever. I never had an Acura or Honda breakdown since I started buying brand new ones way back in 1977. Wow. Most of you aren't even old enough to know. But if you want a performance car, a supercar that's a bargain that will perform alongside Lamborghinis and Ferraris and such, the Acura NSX is the one I recommend. If you've ever seen Pulp Fiction, there's an Acura NSX in it that roars away from the scene where they're at the junkyard. But anyway, this car, well, it is 158,000 bucks, but um, it's got twin turbo V6 plus three, count them, three additional supplemental um, electric motors and all kinds of other exotic technology. It will do zero to 60 in three seconds, okay? And it sticks to the road like glue. Furthermore, it gets pretty decent mileage for a supercar, 21, 22 mile per gallon. Compare that to the other cars in its class that get 12 to 14, okay? So, sounds like I'm doing an ad for Acura, but I'm not. What else do we have here? Austin Martin. Take a look at the Austin Martin cars up here and tell me what they remind you of. That's right, folks. Tesla ripped off their design 
Austin Martin had that design long before Elon Musk decided to steal it and call it his own. There's the Austin Martin Vantage there, see? Looks a lot like a Tesla S. Anyway, no, I'm not bashing on Tesla. They have great cars. I just think it's a little unfortunate that Elon has become crazy. Audi TT. That car will stick to the road like glue. So, if you want a car that will handle very well, I believe it's, is it four-wheel drive? All-wheel drive, yes. Which is one of the reasons. It's, an, it's pretty nice for its class. You can get one that will go 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. Now, if you don't want to pop for the full price of a Rolls Royce, but you want to drive in deluxe style, right? You can save money by buying a Bentley Mulsanne here, see? And it's only around half a million bucks. And so you can get two or three of them in different colors to have in your four car estate garage. Actually, it's only like $402,000. Is it just me, or do BMWs look the same every year? I think they're supposed to look the same every year. But you tell me, right? Ah, uh, my battery's getting low. We can't go too much longer. And we're only on B. How are we going to get all the way up to W or Z? Cadillac ATS. Uh, my apologies to anyone with the Cadillac ATS, but that to me is the most but ugly car on the road, okay? That's just my own, of course, opinion, of which we all seem to have one, don't we? I don't like what they've done in recent generation Cadillacs. Don't like the CTS either. Chevy Bolt EV. I do like the looks of the Chevy Camaro. It looks like a badass machine, doesn't it? And it kind of is. Of course, you're going to run into things because there's zero visibility in this car. You know, you're going to have to squint to see through the tiny strip of window you have around you to tell what's going on in adjacent lanes and such, but, or behind you, but I think it needs all around cameras or something. The Chevy Corvette's pretty, pretty bad arse also. Of course, it always is. But that's a nice looking fat. A real bargain. A head to head winner in previous comparisons they've done. Let's see. Chevy Impala. Boring. Okay. Um, Chevy Volt. A poor man's. Uh, Poor man's Tesla, right? Chrysler 300. Boring. Okay. Oh, here's a car I love. The Dodge Challenger. You know, I talked about Vanishing Point before. Of course, that should be a white. I think they had an article in Car and Driver about the latest Challenger. 
Let's look it up. And it was white. I've got to find it. Because it was quite interesting. The name of the latest, most powerful, most wicked bad artist. We'll look through here while rambling about cars. What if it's not in this issue, though? What if I'm confusing it with another issue? Then I'll go through every single page and be left frustrated and unsatisfied. We found it. Here it is. Look at that. They've got it out on the Bonneville Salt Flats, too. Like in the original movie, Vanishing Point, where they did a little bit of driving on the Salt Flats. Listen to the title, the nameplate on this. This is called the Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Wide Body. There'll be a quiz on it later, so don't forget. It says here, the 808 horsepower SRT Demon. Uh, oh, that's the uh, other uh, Dodge. Um, now you have the, now you have the Hellcat Red Eye which packs a version of the Demon's supercharged 6.2 liter V8, developing 797 horsepower and 707 foot-pound of torque. Unlike the barely street-legal Demon, however, the Red Eye can be had in both the Challenger's regular and wide body configuration and will roll on treaded performance tires instead of the almost slick drag radials. It's a more friendly street car with just as much meanness and punch instead of just being a drag racer. So anyway, I had to go back and check that out because I remember seeing that. All right, where are we? Time for a superhero. You got that right. Time for a superhero. Humanity has become debauched and we need superheroes to come clean things up. What's next? Ferrari. Got a couple of new Ferraris here. I'll just show you the pictures. But since none of us are ever going to own a Ferrari, I won't go into too much more detail, right? How about the Fiat 500? Look at that tiny little thing. It's the kind of car that in high school, three or four of you could get around it, pick it up and stick it in a little box or something, you know, hide it in the backyard between some bushes and the poor owner would have no idea. So Ford Focus and Fiesta and Fusion and I never noticed before they were starting them all with an F. Focus, Fusion and Fiesta. Do you think that's on purpose? Me too. All right, let's see. Here is a big bad performance vehicle the 4 GT. It only gets 11 miles per gallon. There it is. And it costs about a half a million bucks. Okay. So, not ex 
exactly a bargain. So instead, get the Ford Mustang bullet, you know, or the GT. That's a bargain of an impressive uh, performance car that also looks beautiful riding around on the street in Genesis. Boring. Um, Hondas, they're great, but boring. I like the new ones. I do love the Civic uh, uh, Turbo, though. That's, that's a hot hatch, they call those. You know you can lay in wait with that thing. And take on much larger and more expensive vehicles. Put them to shame. Kia. Kia. That's an ugly car. How come I'm so critical? Look at this car. It looks like it's made in Russia or something. Kia Nero. Does it say where it's made? No. Anyway. The Kia Rio. Well, they're cheap. Yeah. You get a brand new car for 15000 there. The Kia Rio. Does 0 to 60 in approximately 3 or 4 days. But, you know, you get what you pay for, right? It handles like an old-fashioned bathtub on wheels. But you get what you pay for, right? You know. Kia Soul. One of those squared off ugly looking things. Um Lamborghini. Another supercar. How much? Uh six hundred and forty-five thousand bucks. For the Aventador. Aventador. Look at that thing. Would you pay 600 if you had, say, $10 million? Would you pay this much for a car? I would feel guilty if I was doing that. Somehow I would feel guilty. Lotus, we can skip over the supercar, McLaren, you know, all these large six-figure sum cars. Where's the normal cars that we all have to drive? Mercedes-Benz S-Class, 250 grand for the top of the line, but it has a head-to-head -head winner sticker on it. That must be worth a couple hundred thousand right there. Hmm. Mitsubishi Mirage. Did somebody squeeze this car up in a vice or something? Look at that thing. What happened to it? It's like somebody pinched it flat. Nissan Altima. I'm not even going to comment. Nissan. Nissan Leaf. This is one of the worst handling cars ever made. The Nissan Leaf, but it's electric, you know. If the lighting appears weird, like I'm a little washed out blue, and then normal when I get back, it's because I'm using a fancy ring light now. You can probably see the reflection in the glasses. There it is. So, you know, like the real ASMR artists do. I actually got it, however, not for me, but for Joanne. Because she's photogenic. So, whereas I am not... Look at this. Here's the smart car. 
which I think is ironic as a name because this might be the dumbest car ever to be sold in the United States. Look at this. And the reason I say this is that, see that tiny thing that you could pick up with one hand and squash, you know, like an orange. And the reason I say it's stupid is the price range can be up to 28,000 bucks on it. Uh, it does zero to 60 in like 11 and a half seconds. Think how unsafe it is. People can't even see you in this car. You're not even in their blind spot because you're down on the ground someplace, you know, with the squirrels in this thing. So an SUV driver doesn't even know you're there. And, um, you know, with that tiny little short wheelbase, you're going to feel every tiny bump in the road. It's going to be like a major 9.0 earthquake every time you hit anything. Even the tiniest crack, bump, or beginning to form pothole. The mileage isn't very good. It's not that great. And worst of all, you, of course you can't put anything in it. Especially not an Oregonian because, well, they're a little on the large side. Don't tell anybody I said so. Anyway, but you might be able to squeeze one Oregonian into this thing, it, you know, across both seats. I'm not sure, but why are you going to pay a full car price, worst of all, a full car price for a third of a car? You know, that's my point. The only possible reason I can see for buying one of these is if you live in the city and um, you have like a file cabinet where you have to keep your car at night or something like that, you know, you don't have a regular parking space, just, you know, um, a little box somewhere where you need to stash it at night. Other than that, I can't really see why you would buy one. So I consider it a dumb car, not a smart one. And um, keeping on the theme of bashing Tesla, which I don't intend to do, the only reason I, I badmouth the, the company, it, it's not the car. The cars are great, okay, except they have huge quality problems, many of them. Um, they're constantly, you know, catching on fire or, you know, having software problems where they just die on the highway or things like that. But other than the quality problem, it's a fantastic car. It's very quick and um, it's all electric, great range, you know, good looking car overall, great technology, you know, self-driving and stuff, you know, but in case you want to, you know, have your car ram you into the back of a truck late at night or run over a deer, but, um, because they can't recognize certain things sometimes, but anyways, what bugs me about Tesla is that Elon Musk is always lying to people, and you know, he promised a Tesla Model 3 for the masses. Here it is, right here. Tesla Model 3 for the masses. And his promise was it would be a $35,000 upscale electric vehicle. But instead, and, his, and he would sell these, you know, 100,000 of them. 300,000 of them, half a million of them, they are not selling it for that price. You know what it costs to get one of these? 70,000 plus. 
it was another bait and switch tactic on Elon's part. He's charging as much as the Model S Tesla, even though this is a stripped down car. Let's see what they say about it. See the Model S? Here's the Model S. It has a sticker, a Motor Trend Award sticker. And that ranged in price from 71K on up. The Model 3, all those specs on the much hyped Tesla Model 3, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's smaller than the Model X. It will have a conventional trunk. Oh, the other thing I kind of don't like. I don't like that front end with no feature on it, okay? I understand it doesn't need an air scoop since it doesn't have a radiator. But shouldn't it have something up there? It looks like that little girl that um, didn't have a mouth, you know? because in that Twilight Zone trilogy thing, it scares me. I guess I scare easily, huh? It's too smooth. I want at least an insignia or something up there. I know they're trying to make a statement and all that, you know, but Toyota Prius. They don't want us to know what the new Toyota Supra will actually look like, so they put a pattern all over it so that we can't tell right there. See, you can see the motor trend approach shows all the vehicles, the major vehicles from all the major car companies. That's why I prefer it over car and driver. We've got all the different Volks, Volkswagens, the Golf, the Beetle. The Beetle's starting to look not quite like a Beetle. What was I watching? Where there was a bunch of VW Beetles. Because it was Germany in the past. Oh. The Odessa file was on Retro HD this week, and we were watching that excellent film with John Foyt, almost like a cult film. He's chasing down a Nazi war criminal. I won't do any spoilers, and oh look, there's the Civic Type R. Super hot performing bargain car from Honda. I tell you what, if I was 22 years old, I'd be buying that car. Let's see if they have the specs here somewhere. Civic Type R. I think they took it around the Nurburg. How do you pronounce this? I know I have a couple subbies in Germany. Please pronounce for me that famous large race course there, the Nürburgring or something like that. Nürburgring. Somebody knows, wait, is it here? Someplace I think I read that they ran it around that course, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong. Okay. Let me give you the specs on this thing. It only costs 34k for the Civic Type R. That's the red one. And you can have a bargain version for only 24k if you get the Civic SI instead. Listen to these performance specs on the Type R. It's got 306 horsepower in that small lightweight vehicle. 
it will go 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. And it only weighs 3,000 something, 100 pounds. Um, it still gets good mileage, 28. And um, stopping distance is short, 106 feet. No, wait. Where's the stopping? I was reading the wheelbase. Boy, was I off. Um, I know it's here. Braking, 60 to 0. Oh, yeah, it's about 106 feet. The Civic SI is close in performance. 100. Let's see here. 205 horsepower. It's not that far off. 0 to 60 in 6.8 seconds. That's about the same as my Mazda. But it's a nice, very nice car. Bargain. You know, you have to be young to have seats that look like that. Otherwise, you look just plain silly. Okay? So, I don't do that. Exotic car marketplace. Look at all those exotics. McLarens and stuff. Does the fastback hatch? Volkswagen goes up market. Does the fastback hatch have a chance? It says a whole article on that. But we won't get into that because I'm out of battery. What is it about Motor Trend? I guess because it's a guy's magazine. That must be the reason why you have ads like that and that and that back here. Okay. I won't go into detail. Even though I want to discuss them at length and critique them, we'll refrain. Look, I can see what Joanne's going to do in her next ASMR. I think she's going to do snowballs. Snowball. But if I keep on talking, I will not have a snowball chance in hell of this video not turning off on me because of the battery. So I'll go for now. And until next time, if you made it this far, you'll notice I took out the, took off the echo now. So it's just the straight sounds of the Tascam, which I think sound pretty good. I really love this Tascam. All right, everybody. Don't ASMR. Who's ASMRing at the same time, okay? Because that could be a problem. Alright. I hope this video relaxed you and put you to sleep. But if you're still awake, and if you happen to give it a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate that. Especially if you subscribe. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.